Hi, you guys know me. I'm Corey. I'm the Dungeon Master for Opportunity Roll. I'm here with a bit of bad news. I unfortunately was in a car accident. Um, though I'm, for the most part, in good health, I broke a bone in my foot, um, which needed two specialty surgeries. This episode was edited during the time I was in the hospital, so it's not perfect. I know. I apologize. But um, I'm going to be working to get episodes out every week uh, to get things back on track. I'm working to get our Patreon back up. And I'm going to be doing some new announcements for our um, our streaming that we're going to potentially be doing here within the next couple of weeks. Um, so thanks for listening. Thanks for coming back. I hope you guys enjoy episode 5. And I'll see you guys at the end of the episode. Hi, everybody. I'm Corey. I'm the Dungeon Master. I'm here with the Opportunity Roll Group. Say hi, everybody. Howdy. Hello. Hello. Let's go ahead and start introducing ourselves. Let's go ahead and start with Jace. I'm Jace, and I am playing Soot, the human fighter. Max? Holy crap, it's been about two years doing this podcast, and the first time I think I've been introduced as Max. Hi, I'm Max, otherwise known as Rodeo, and I will be playing Caster, your wonderful human cleric. Is a Howdy, I'll be playing Martha, the uh, dwarf cleric. Chris? Hi. I'm Chris. I'm going to be playing the blonde hair, blue eyes, always needs to be reminded to wear a shirt. Zare the human monk. God, I Are you calling so me out? much? No, just so much to be no, because like there's a backstory between his his character photos and them never wearing a shirt. And then a <laughs> promise it from that porn? If... it's from porn. No. <laughs> No, I was just talking about Alex. The blue eyes and no shirt right now. <laughs> Hold on, just a <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for calling me out. Ooh. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'll be playing Callisto, the tiefling druid, who does not need to be reminded to wear a shirt. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Dusk. Hello, I am Dusk, and I will be playing Finn, the human bard who always smiles. Now, who would like to recap us? Normally, I come in with a recap, but we always do a recap before game. I think it would be good to have the viewers listen to your guys' your points or, or memories on the last game. I think, Chris, uh, you volunteered. Would you like to take it over? Uh, sure. So, um, the last time, um, Zare returned to the scene after being absent, Um the party had retrieved the cat and brought it back to Pulpa, where they reunited the cat with the owner and completed their first guild mission. Uh, Zare had a lead from uh, his friend in Pulpa um, that he believed and expressed to the group that it could lead to some kind of... Uh, uh, financial uh, compensation or financial gain for the guild in their endeavors. Um, this lead led us to Fortosum, which we decided as a guild was kind of like a crossroads between two routes that we would later decide to take, either going straight for where we believe the crystal to be in Grangle Jungle to the north, or perhaps going to Blarg and finding a way to get uh, ship's passage uh, up to that peninsula. So we set out from Pulpa. Uh, we found an abandoned well. A couple of people made some frivolous wishes. Uh, we set up camp and uh, we all made idle chatter. During watch, uh, Finn and Sarah found a mysterious ring that appeared to have been left by a mysterious figure that vanished as soon as we saw it. Martha and Jason made some pancakes and um, got to know each other a little bit better during their watch. 
uh, they made pancakes in the morning, that is. And uh, Callisto and Castor also uh, continued to uh, foster their connection uh, while the rest of the group slept. In the morning, we took everything down, and we're en route to uh, Fortosum. All right. So we also, from... Sorry, we also met uh, a, another NPC named Wesley, um, oh, who yeah. is a sword fighter, uh, a farm boy, and uh, trained by his father in uh, multiple weapons, uh, the last of which it was never finished, training in the longsword. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Now, we're picking up on the 12th of Botorum. Uh, you guys spent two days in Pulpa and then a day on the road. So that makes it the 12th. We are two days away from the next month, which should be interesting. Um, I'm really excited to see how that goes. Next month is my birthday. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's another thing we did. We have uh, birthdays this year. So we were made, we made sure that... Uh, Everyone had kind of a date for their birthday, so that'll be fun to kind of really see kind of come to life. I think that's that's going to be something I'm really excited to see, too. Um, but uh, let's go ahead. And Well, we already had breakfast, right? We've already woken up, had a bit of communication. I think we're ready to move. Well, maybe. That's up to you guys. What would you guys like to do? I think the faster that we get on the road, um, I believe our navigator said that we only have until twilight to get to Fortosum. I, I think the earlier we get there, the more chance we have of finding a comfortable place at an inn. Um, now, let me, let me ask you a question quick, uh, Chris, just to spark my memory because it's not the best. Did uh your character your character pulled me aside and talked about going to Fortosa? Did you tell me anything more about why we were going? Didn't you say you had a, you had a lead or something? Yes, um, I let the group know that um during our conversation we were speaking in celestial for part of it and then in common for another part of it. I let the entire group know that there, uh, we might have a financier opportunity. So we were Fortosum. talking about if we trusted New Guy. I think. Uh, this was a different conversation. A different conversation? Right? A different I forget topic. what was... I was trying to remember what was in the beginning or in the, the in that topic that we had. Wesley had suggested finding passage of ship from Blark. No, Wesley has a ship. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And you said we need to go to Fortosum for some. I forget if you gave me more exact reason, but Castro's like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. Just there was an easy opportunity for some money, perhaps. Mm. Okay. Yep. 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 So Castro will then look at um, Zaire and, and nod. I, I agree we should get into Fortosum as quickly as we can. Martha, do you need any uh, help cleaning up your cooking supplies after that fantastic breakfast? Oh no, I'm fine, dear. Castor would have already been helping put stuff away. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just kind of how how he would have he just wants to be helpful. Uh, I'm I'm gonna check on on Soot since he was sick yesterday. I suppose Soot is feeling better. Uh, Soot will be... Uh, oh, once again, I, I guess I'll take this out of game. Um, I, I guess I, I assume I was resting in the cart or something along those lines. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fair. Uh, so Soot will be there kind of just like chilling, um, reading a book, uh, the text of which will be... Um, Alex, you'd actually recognize it. It'll be in Infernal. And so it's just kind of like leafing through it and like taking notes in a little notebook. Um, Callisto would see it and see that it's in Infernal and say, what are you reading? Uh, it's a, uh, a treatise. Um, 
basically they're uh, you, you know about like planes and uh, stuff like that, correct? Uh, a little bit. Do I know anything specifically, Corey? Uh, I'm sorry, I completely missed. What was he talking about? Uh, would would Callisto know anything about other planes or anything like the existence of other planes? What other planes? I don't know. Well, planes are are they're about as much as astrology right now. You know, places that we know of but can't prove really anything too solidly. Like we see the stars, but if somebody was like that star is eighteen thousand billion light years away, everybody's just be like, eh, okay, yeah, okay, you know that. Are you talking uh, like uh, the different demonic slash devil planes there, Soot? Uh, yeah, well, this well, is not Soot. Uh, I'm not asking you. I'm not there. I was asking Jace. Uh, yeah, this is like a, essentially almost this. This book would, I'd imagine, essentially be like a nonfiction version of like Dante's Inferno, but it would still oh, okay. be viewed as like. If if I may have this, Corey, as almost like a, it is written as though it is nonfiction, but most people look at it as though it is a work of fiction. Like this guy wrote all of this huge treatise, and it's like everyone basically thinks the dude's out of his gourd. But like, it can be treated as, I guess, like this dude's actual recount of going through like one of the hells if it's real. Sounds good. The like caster would be probably from uh, that more than anyone. Yeah. Um. In in response to your question, she says, "I'm not entirely sure what you mean, but please tell me about it." It's a, a very bad place. Uh, it lays not like adjacent to ours. That's closer to other places, but but far far away. Um. That is why you don't see many. Fiendish influences on this world, but for those that are, um, uh, I don't know the term, um, dumb enough to try to break that barrier, there is always something they're waiting for them, and this is um, one man's story of what waited for him. Uh, I'm here to look for what I believe is true based on my known histories and knowledge. So. If I'm understanding correctly, those of my kind are not that common? Well, not your kind. I'm talking about uh, those of... Oh, boy. Okay, so... Tieflings uh, are typically considered those that have been, in the past, tainted through some sort of uh, typically uh, uh, devilish pact. Sometimes demonic, but more often devilish. Um, and, Aren't this just in the corner, so, sipping water like, uh, oh no. Coach's <laughs> eyebrows go straight up. A, a pact with the actual fiends themselves, those that re reside in a realm that is most commonly referred to as the Nine Hills. Uh, this is uh, regarded as a scholar named Abragado. Uh, his uh, exploration of one of the layers of the Nine Hills um, it's typically viewed as the ramblings of a madman uh, going through some sort of like sen uh, senility or uh, dementia. Uh, however, uh, there is rumors slash uh, essentially if you look through, uh, I believe it to be true. Um, so I'm going through to try to find the truth of it. Understandably. It's a noble pursuit, if but uh, I'm believing in Abogado's treatises. It, I understand. It, I have personal it, experience. It can lead you down bad paths. What do you mean personal experience? I have had. I believe, based on what I have seen, technically demonic experience. I actually haven't had any experience with a uh, devils but i believe that those realms if they are not actually approaching our own uh the material plane or at least something is happening and i believe that the the, the veils the 
something is happening and those of fiendish origin have the ability uh, to, at the very least, influence uh, the happenings on the material plane. I'd rather not go into it if I could uh, skirt that question. To be oh, honest. I completely understand. We all have our own secrets to keep. Um, out of curiosity, does the book say anything about other methods of becoming a tiefling? Uh, the only reason I ask is I am not personally aware of anyone in my family having made a pact of any kind, given we've all been the way we are for ah, countless generations. See, that right there is actually a matter of both religious and scientific and arcane contention uh, regarding the origins of tieflings. Um, I take the middle road, considering it to be a combination of both um, uh, family history and arcane influence, in that maybe your parents or even grandparents didn't make a deal, but maybe someone hundreds of years way back in the past uh, didn't even have to make a demonic deal. They might have found some sort of artifact. They might have been to some sort of place they shouldn't have been that uh, secretly affected their blood. They passed that down onto their ancestors. And then, wham, bam, you suddenly have tieflings. Uh, I assume, based on your, uh, based on the context, that your whole fam family is tieflings, which probably means that uh, you probably came from a bunch, uh, your family. Origins are probably a group of outcasts that decided to band together and form some sort of, uh, based on abilities that I have seen, some sort of natural conclave. Uh, but that is, uh, it's... once again, contentious. And I apologize if I'm overstepping any of my bounds or assumptions. Um, oh, no, you assumed correctly. Um, it, 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 take it, this philosophy on the road. Uh, I yeah. believe that our pack animal is about to chew through the bridle. Um, oh dear. I I think that is true, but also Zer has heard this rant uh, probably about three times at this point. So you're right. Let's keep going. Uh, you'll hear it at least two more times uh, before our journey is done. I can yeah, I'd love to hear more. Bastard and I can... Uh, uh, <laughs> and it'll stick his tongue out of so it. And so that I could always help give you more um, of a historical and religious context on, and you as well, um, Callisto, on tiefling bloodlines and such. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. We'll, we'll have to talk as we walk. Yes, absolutely. Let us, uh, let's get to Fortosum. Hopefully we can get there before the sun sets. Maybe find us a, another gig, some of that... Um, some of that money we could find in that town, city. And maybe look for some information on, you know, my husband, but yes, um, one can help. Further north, I thought, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's looking for the crystal as well. So I would assume, since that is like straight south, maybe that's where he went. I, I can hope. I can certainly hope. Let us hope together. And Soot will actually, I guess, this has probably already been done, but Soot will hop out, uh, put his bags and stuff back in the cart, and start walking along with the rest of the group. And while they're walking, uh, Castor will look to Soot and say, you'll have to teach me how to get stronger like you, so next time I have to carry you, it's not so arduous. Uh... I'll do my best to not be so indisposed next time as well. Uh, but yes, we can start training together. Uh, Zara and I oftentimes do a group workout, so you're invited formally. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, Castro looks very excited, very smiley. No, I will say for, for Sud, uh, there is a new face among the group. Um, uh, kind of long-haired. He looks rather younger in the face, uh, earring to his side, simple brown shirt and a sword, um, sheathed, a uh, large backpack. Um, and he, he's not really engaging. He's just kind of off to the side, packing his things, getting his bedroll together for you guys to get on the road. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your, your description. Oh, that's good. Soot will walk up, um, extend a hand towards uh, this person. I apologize for my uh, situation uh, yesterday. I'm feeling much better now. Didn't get a chance to properly introduce myself. The name is Soot. Oh. In the hand. That's okay. I'm, I'm Wesley. I think if I remember correctly, it was actually Wesley and Caster who carried him. Yeah. Well, I appreciate all of your efforts and taking care of me. Uh, I'll buy everyone around at the bar as a token of my gratitude. That's okay. I don't really drink anyway, uh, but uh, you guys are letting me travel with you. So, uh, call it even? Even's even, then. Don't say I didn't try, though. Oh, no. Yeah. And he's just going to kind of uh, kind of finger this ring that's on a necklace around his neck. Uh, and he'll uh, head on with the group. To Fort Tussum we go. Oh, to Fort Tussum we go. Now, did we use our traveling crystal at any point? Nope. Did we want to? Uh, n- I think the group consensus was going to be that we were going to use it if we were waiting for Zare in Fortosum. Okay. But since he's with us, we don't need to use the traveling crystal. It's in case of emergency. <laughs> I'd, I'd say a good time to use the traveling crystal might be when we're on the high, you know, seas. If we well, go that are, route. You guys are now up to two traveling crystals. Ooh. Uh, but I will say this. Um... For the listeners, uh, a traveling crystal, for the most time, when they are traveling, there is a chart that I roll. Uh, if they roll something between 1 and 100, they can have something eventful happen, something uneventful. They could find items. They might be able to find small events. Uh, these traveling crystals will make it so that they can travel to their destination unhindered. No events, nothing. I mean, it, it could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. Because, you know, you could lose the potential at finding more gold, you could lose the potential at meeting NPCs or places in the world or finding secrets, but at the same time, it also means that you guys can stay on schedule. I, uh, say, I was going to say, I say we don't use it. Uh, maybe we could, you know, stretch our combat legs, as it were, somehow, possibly, if we get roll lucky or unlucky, I guess. Depending on what we get, get that XP. Not even the XP, just to get a feel of you know group dynamic and how we go. Martha will be useless. <laughs> I think there have been so many caravans traveling north from Pulpa to Fortosum and beyond that one more won't make much of a difference. I doubt we'll find anything too terribly interesting. Well, uh, I agree with there. I was going to say we did find that knife, but that was not too Fortosum, so... Don't speak on the knife. What knife? I, I, I didn't say nothing. Castor does not like the knife. Burrows his brow at the mention of it. Finn doesn't like the knife. How about a subject change? Do you guys want to hear the story about how my husband got attacked by a dire goose? Yes. Please. Can I get while we're doing that? Can I get a one d one hundred roll then? Ooh, may may I? Uh, oh, okay. Sixty four. Oh, so Ooh, we have an event, people. This will be fun. Let's go ahead. Where is my event table? Uh, is it not in here yet? Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, oh, he was getting God. dinner for us. Um, we were getting some yummy eggs. Um, or he was. And... 
I'm sorry. So here's what's going to happen. And as Izzy is, is recounting uh, this tale, you can hear a crackle of lightning kind of crash the sky and see the spark kind of travel the clouds. And in a blink of an eye, something's going to happen. A strike of lightning is going to hit one of you guys. So I need you guys to all roll. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. There is one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight people traveling at the same time. Can I have Jace, since you rolled this, roll me a 1d8, please. Can I? I was going to say, can I volunteer? I was actually going to say something because I don't know if Caster is as well, but Soot is wearing metal armor. Uh, Caster's wearing scale. Yeah. Well, That's let's awesome. go ahead and roll that d8 because it is random. Whoever you'd like to roll. All right. Four. Oh, love. Okay. Let's. See. Martha, you're the one getting Rip. struck. She was just telling a funny goose story. Oh, hold on. That's the funny part about it. <laughs> you know, we always joked that the god Craig always hated Matthew. <laughs> it was quite a. Is something tingly? You're going to take eight points of damage. Oh, as this, and, and, and that's a natural one on the die. This could have went so much worse. Oh, all right. Um, you're going to see this light come down. It's going to crack directly over Ize. No, not Ize, sorry. Martha. And it's going to kind of trickle over the ground around the area. I would say maybe some puffy hair. Kind of like that static electricity kind of situation going on. Slow blink. Ow! Okay, let's not tell that story. Uh, goodness. Are you okay? Oh, like, oh my god. Esther Did you... will quickly run up. Look her over real quick. And I'm then... fine. Uh, I think I might have a slight burn on the top of my head there. <laughs> uh, Esther looks at the top of her head since she is a dwarf and much shorter than it. <laughs> and he will uh, put a hand on top of her head. And give her a good old, uh... Oh, nice. Give her a good old all of her hit points back. Um, can Soot do a quick, like, I guess our bad prayer to Chasser? You could. Because I would assume that's who controls lightning. So that's so it's just going to be like, I don't know what we did, but sorry, won't happen again kind of deal. <laughs> Ben so, will join, join you in on that because he also worships uh, Chazzer. Do not speak Craig's name. <laughs> Sorry about the. We won't talk about geese. So here's the situation. You guys have the option of a difficulty for this encounter because it is not over. The winds are going to whip harder. You guys are going to start to see a cone form in the air above the local area near Wolf Pass Forest, but there's not going to be just one. There's going to be about two or three. Go ahead and make those rolls for me, if you like. Uh, if you're praying to a deity, that's 3D 100s. Separate. 3D 100. Come on, come on, Finn. Ooh, goddess, at least I'm consistent. Goddess of nature and goddess of... Life and death. Yes, yeah, Castro's in on this. Now you guys have the choice of difficulty. Easy, medium, hard, or deadly. Uh, How'd quick, you get three game? How'd nine. you get two gamer numbers in a row? <laughs> 69, quick, 69! Yeah! Um, second off, what does uh, maybe know what the difficulties mean before we choose? The difficulties will give you certain payouts for each of these events. It, it, it might be things that you find. It could be uh, rewards for what you've done. But it also means that there is a certain type of, of potential danger or damage that comes with these. And the higher the difficulty, the better the payout. You go or over damage. The again. Easy, medium, hard, or deadly. A, and medium. does it sorry sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you go ahead 
Oh, I just had a brain fart. Um, <laughs> does it like balance to our level or? Yes. Okay. I say medium or hard. <laughs> I say deadly. No. I'm a, I'm a I say no to Not that. that. No. Uh, okay. I like your gusto, Fen. So here's the thing, though. Deadly encounters, uh, they're... I've, I've put groups through deadly encounters before, and it's hit or miss on whether it's... It's basically who gets the jump, and how... Especially with a group this size, it's who gets the jump and how bad the jump is. Uh, I'm gonna this go with hard. This is our first one, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also also fighting yeah. nature, I assume. I'm not viewing this as a combat encounter. I'm viewing this as a or group event. surviving a tornado. Yes. Like yeah. an event. So I'm going to say I'll agree, actually, medium hard. Um, yeah. I'm tending towards medium just because I don't want to really dip my toe in the uh, PC death waters yet. So am I. I would, I would go with medium myself. Martha, do we see and go to medium? Although, yeah, medium. sure. What, what are you saying, uh, Chris? I'll vote medium. Medium it is. Man. So as wind picks up, you guys are going to notice things. Sticks, dirt, leaves. All the way up to a half a tree trunk will be lifted from the ground. I need everyone to make dex rolls to see if you can find a sturdy place before this funnel will land on the ground close to you guys. About 15 oh, no, feet away. Is this a, is this oh, a no. check? Or a oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is to protect yourself and see if you guys will be um, picked up by the winds. Is it save or check? Sorry. Uh, just a save. Can I take disadvantage because I need to grab my books out of the cart? Martha's yeah. clinging to the cart. Oh, no. <laughs> Legitimately, Soot is getting their bag with oh. like books and stuff out of the cart. Oh, why did it do it twice? We'll just do the first one then. Oh God. She yeah. is going down with this cart. Yeah. Mm. Oh, not before uh, me. I was going to say, can Caster take disadvantage to help anybody who needs help? It looks like everybody needs help. Um, Ooh, rip. Let's see. Finn looks to be relatively okay. Uh, Zare might Jason, right. come here, dear. <laughs> The nine. I don't. At least he's okay. <laughs> so let's run down these numbers. Zer got a fourteen. Finn got a fifteen. Callisto got four. Martha got nine, and Soot got seven. Wesley got six. Caster got nine. And Jason got nineteen. Anybody above or on a fourteen is safe. Anyone below will soon find themselves getting picked up by the wind. No amount of clutching or holding will save you. And you will find yourself very quickly, 15 to 20 feet off the ground, still gaining speed. By the time this wind and this rain is pattering at your face, you guys will look down and find that you are almost 60 feet in the air. This is the opposite of where dwarves are supposed to be. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> we have one, two, three, four, five people in the air currently. So here's what we're going to do. Somebody roll me a 1d5. Pretty please. Caster, we got a three. My lucky number. That means, Soot, as you are in the air, among the things flying around will be a sack of gold. Now you can attempt to reach for it, if you like. Or just kind of look at it as you see a piece of a fence fly by. I, yeah, soot I guess go for it. I don't really have much else I can do. I have no magical abilities to save me or help me, so why not go for it? Go ahead and give me one more deck save. That's a 10. So there's good news and there's bad news. With a deck save of 10, you're going to reach out and you're going to grab that bag. And it is going to feel pretty hefty. The bad news is 
is flying by you is going to be a large stone. That stone is going to crack your forearm. As you reach out, you're going to take 2d6 worth of damage. Two natural oh. ones, two points. Wait, I'm going to relog because that's three <laughs> runs in a row. Okay. We call that I'm a hairline it. fracture. Yeah, that's, I mean, that still can be bad if it hits in the right place. Well, it's still broken. I will state that. Uh, which arm, uh, if I may ask? I'll let you choose. Uh, I would probably say it might be the dominant yeah, I'm going to say right, uh, so I get to keep my shield, but no spear. Now, what I will say is, until that bone is, is I wouldn't say mended, uh, I would say either braced or, or healed in some way. And mending bones is a little bit different than just spending points and healing. Um, you're going to get disadvantage with that hand. That's fair. Uh, Soot will obviously cry out whenever they get like hit. On the, I assume it's basically for like two damage. It's basically like on the wrist, kind of thing. Probably, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's it, a that's a bad hit. <laughs> um, damage is enough to kill level one PCs in yeah, AD&D. Like, I've I've mm. seen a lot of things where it's like you as a person have probably not experienced one hit point of damage, like as a human. So like, it, it's probably a lot. Um, so so yeah, cry it's... out and clutch like kind of like using their left hand kind of like hold the gold to their chest because at you know at that point they've already broken a wrist like they're all in at this point now here's where it gets really bad for those on the ground you guys are still going to be dealing with heavy winds but this funnel is going to slowly dissipate from the top to the bottom and everybody on the ground will still be dealing with the wind but those at top you're going to free fall. So, let's go ahead and deal falling. Uh, I think um, this I'm actually might be far more deadly than I think. Can we roll an acrobatics check to mitigate that? You can um, uh, certainly maybe, try. Kinda, you if could not, try. if not, I will. I I just know that that is sometimes an option for falling. Falling damage five e is one d six per ten feet. Can I uh, do a thing as I'm falling? Like take a bonus action. Maximum is twenty d six. By the way, is it? I thought it was yeah. ten. This probably isn't going to work, but she's desperate and she's falling. Catch me! Catch me! Catch me! Catch me! Catch me! <laughs> so it's one d six for ten. every ten feet. You guys are sixty feet in the air. Oh god! Um, as as I'm falling, uh, can I take a bonus action and transform into a bear? You may. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And now it's the Wizard of Oz. Why didn't you just turn into a bird? Because I can't until 8th level. I just looked it up. Wait, are you a moon druid? Yeah. I, I still can't do it eight. until 8th level. No, it, it, you have to stay within the no swimming yeah. and then no flying. No flying. You can have a higher CR. Yeah, I couldn't remember. So I'm just turning into the thing with the highest HP that I can think of. So. Would Unseen Servant it catch me work? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, Unseen Servant is capable of doing things, but has little to minimum strength, strength, strength of two. Yeah. That's fair. She's still going to spend that spell slot, though, I say, because hey, maybe you can break she's her desperate. Fall a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Catch me, catch me, catch me. <laughs> All right. Are we ready, guys? Unfortunately. And do I have to roll separately for each of us? Ooh. That is 25 oh. damage. Thank God. That... Almost I'm still a bear. Oh, that almost kills me outright. Uh, so Martha is out. knocked the fuck out perfectly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you have oh. 25 hit points? Yes. Good How? Lord, you're con. Uh, she has a con of 16. Wesley is alive by one point. Am I squishy? I only have 14 hit points. So, so it is out. Uh, not dead, but but out. Oh, thank God. Okay. So they'll Listen. all hit the ground, right? Mm hmm Who do I see is not moving? Caster probably is the closest to death, is my yeah. guess. Caster and Soot and Yeah. But yeah. Right, I I'm going to do healing word on uh Caster. And then it does is he does I get him up? I 
Probably. I mean, six six HP of healing versus a sixty foot drop. Uh, let's let's go with realism for just a short bit. And I know this is D anD. d Yeah, yeah. But I, how would you feel after a sixty foot drop? And then somebody gives you, say, cough syrup. At I, least I'm high. <laughs> uh, Finn is freaking out. He's that. That's that's what he he thought that might help. Who uh, was that for? That for was that, Caster. Out of out of game. Does that at least like? I know that might not like pop him back up, to, but does that at least like stabilize him? Like Caster. Oh, yeah. Or, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. When when healed, you go from zero or any negative okay. straight to zero to saying. adding the HP that you gained. Being knocked uh, out after falling sixty feet after being healed, that's still fine, and I'll accept that. I just want to make sure it's not like the worst it can be. All right. Uh, um, oh, sorry. To say, I, can, oh. I was going to say, Callisto immediately pops out of bear form and uh, runs to his A and casts Cure Wounds. Okay. Martha, but yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Martha. okay, I do it all the time. Master getting he's just kind of sitting up and feeling completely dazed from a 60-foot fall and basically almost dying. Uh, he won't be able to do much, but he'll just say a quick prayer looking at uh, Soot next to him and just That'll be... bear the dying so he doesn't die. Okay. I think I shattered my tailbone. Luckily <laughs> for me, it's not touch. Callisto will give seven points of healing to Martha. I will walk over to Soot and give him a healing word, word as well. Don't forget, you guys do also have a healing potion that Wesley gave you. 25 points of damage is a lot. That was, and that's a decently low roll, too. Actually, no, no you're 66. It's a, it's a very yeah, high, a roll. high roll. You're right. You're right. I mean, could have been worse. You chose medium. Listen, I'll, yeah. I'll take it. Soot will essentially... Oh, God. I, I hate that noise. Um, the only way I can describe it. The noise that, like, you you hear it in like hospices and nursery homes that, like, uh, a death rattle. Essentially, not like that, but like when you like, I hate, I hate the like old people not having a great time. Essentially, that noise. The not old like, groan. Yeah. yeah, and you're just like, I, I get it. You're eighty. Well. You're in pain your whole life. I'm so sorry. Like that kind of thing. Um, and we'll probably not even make a move to sit up. We'll just kind of, like, lay there. By the way, worth noting, outside of Caster, that's the first time any of you have seen Callisto Wild Shape. So you guys just saw a bear fall out of the sky and then immediately turn back into a tiefling. I, I will say we were probably more panicked about the bodies that dropped and did not move. Oh, absolutely. I'm just worth noting. And to be fair, Soot and Martha were out. When you were a bear, yeah, a bear. I got you. Wait, I have to do a bet, Callisto. When I fell, did I bounce? <laughs> did, did she bounce? I think everybody bounced. Uh, she just says, "Yes." I knew. It. Are you okay? I think I shattered something, but I'll be okay, dear. Oh my good lord. Okay. Okay. Uh Caster's gonna Wait, the donkey. Where's the donkey? Where's the cart? To be the... fair, that cart has let me double check. Nine hundred pounds to it. The cart is fine. Oh thank God. I have bad news about the donkey. Don't uh... you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> we have our first casualty. No, not Ollie. Unfortunately, Ollie did not survive the fall. Wait, I thought we didn't bring Ollie. I thought we, we didn't bring Ollie. Ollie. We bought a donkey. new one. Ollie's at the ostler. <laughs> I'm oh, talking yeah, about the donkey Ollie. that you guys brought. Maybe yeah. not Ollie. Expendable but... donkey. <laughs> number poor one. donkey, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was falling. He saw a bear, freaked out, had a heart attack, then died on impact. I mean, sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> That's tragic. Okay, who wants to help me cut him up? 
Wait, what? <laughs> it's Every meat. Buddy, can we take Where it? I come from, you don't waste a dead animal. Can Where I come from, you leave it the fuck alone and it goes back to nature. Yes. What she At least said. take the haunches. And we no! Caster is starting to look a little bit more frustrated. Can, can we take a moment and help me up? And I need to look over everybody's injuries. Uh, see if there's any help that needs to be done. If uh, Oh, let me get my uh, hard candies. If I may uh, ask for preferential treatment there, I think something happened to uh, my hand. And so we'll kind of do that weird arm lift thing where you're trying to keep your arm steady, but also like cradling it type deal. Astro will kind of stagger over to Soot. And, uh, and I guess medicine check him. Okay. Go ahead and give me a medicine check. 21. Oh, nice. His wrist is broken. All right. Uh, pretty bad. Mm, so Caster looks I think I can help you for now. I don't know if my healing magic will do much, but maybe a little combination of the two. Um and Caster will take I have five of these left. Uh he'll take two strips of metal out of his back his backpack and pair a little bit of some of his uh like shirt or something and wrap them together to make like a rudimentary brace. Okay. And, and he'll look to sit before he gives it a real good tighten. Yeah. So it'll do like firm manly eye contact thing where you're like, I'm not in pain. This hurts so bad, but I can't be in pain kind of thing. Uh, yeah. And he'll wrench that shit tight. Um. Oh dear! Everyone gets a bonbon. <laughs> and Caster will will throw on top something to help the bone mend a little bit better and straighter, which is uh, he believes it's just another healing spell that he knows. But uh, you get two hit points. I'll take it. I'm now at half health. Uh, Martha hands out good berry bonbons to everyone. Oh, goodness. Frog in my throat. <clears> Soot <throat> uh, will also, uh, kind of like as Caster is walking up, will toss the bag of gold, or the bag, to uh, Sarah, uh, who looks, I guess, relatively fine. Uh, this was up in there. I figured, you know, if I was going to die, I could at least uh, get y'all some profit. Up there. Well, yeah. uh, lucky me. <laughs> Zero weighed in his hands and start uh, poking through. Could I get uh, a, a rough estimate without counting? Um, but there is no gold in the bag. There are okay. three items, three crystal. Oh. There is an opal like color with a. I want to say an essence of something inside of it that moves around. There's a blue one that looks rather cut, defined, uh, more like a sapphire with black, wispy smoke. And there is a red, lighter pink, almost kind of like a, a cut like a ruby, but there is ore at the cap of it. And that, as well, seems to contain some type of swift-moving energy of some kind all right i am going to um i'm going to uh show it i'm gonna lift it up and i'm gonna show it to uh jason who is by my side because he also succeeded so i imagine we we're kind of like huddling by the cart and I'm just going to say, maybe I could get you to look at these later. And um, I'm going to let everyone know that I am pocketing this. 
and then I'm going to continue to help people get back on their feet, um, help the most injured onto the cart, and um, then ask, uh, uh, I believe I'm going to need some help from at least two of you uh, to help get this cart the rest of the way into the city. I can help with that. I need more broken bones. Caster is completely neglected looking at himself, by the way. Any broken bones on me, Corey? No. I mean, you guys hit some pretty substantial damage. Uh, I'd say um, you guys have been hit by debris, maybe scrapes, bruises, but you guys were lucky to get it without a broken bone. Um, I, I mean, at, at this point... Maybe a the ground of... was soft from all the rain. I also assume, like, yeah, maybe some like broken or like ribs, which it's like you can kind of function on, but like that's more of like rest. Who went to zero HP when they landed? I went to negative two. Uh, yeah, faster, faster, and I went to negatives. I went to negative nine. Anyone who went to zero or below, roll me a D four, and we'll talk. Please let one be good. Oh. Lucky number again. Wait, why are we rolling for? Let's go. If you went below two zero or below health whenever you landed. Okay. We're uh, rodeo and I Uh-oh. pull for ourselves. Izzy, you have broken your left leg. Ooh. Uh Max? Ow. Two ribs. And you have broken your right arm. Jason, you have your wrist and a broken rib. Oh, okay. I can, that's honestly, I somehow got lucky out of that. So, Isn't right. like a leg one of the most painful things to break? Depends on what part. If you break your femur, yes. If you break your fibula or tibia, not so much. Damn. I'd say it's the shin. Uh, so that would be the tibia, I believe. I think the f- tibia is yeah, the that's... weight-bearing one, which is the shin, and then the fibula is the one in the back. Um, Ow! So, Castor will take another two strips of metal and another part of his sleeve. Well, I guess he'll need two for a leg, and he'll wrap up Martha's leg with a brace as best he can. Her and... leg was broken, and anything else, DM? Uh, with a one, you're good. And, um, he'll try to help the bones heal a little bit faster, and he'll use the rest of little bit of his magic that he's got left for the day. Now, how... Just paint me a picture, because you do have a broken arm. Who, me? Couple... Uh, yeah, don't you have a broken arm, and or is it just three ribs that I gave you? You gave, it me, was... you gave me two ribs and a broken right arm. A yeah. broken right arm. So he's just he's just doing it with his his left arm. He's putting the stuff up and then uh, twisting. Can I help you with that, uh, Caster? I I have some knowledge into it and uh, wrapping up uh, injuries. So do I. If you need it. <laughs> Yeah, Kester will accept the help, not realizing that he has a broken arm. I mean, he I, he kind of does, but he's just not using it as much. And then I guess he'll look. Is it upper arm that broke or lower arm? Lower arm, forearm. All right. So one of the bones in there. I forget the radius and ulna. There we go. Um. So Kester will look, and oh, that's a shame. Um. As he's, you know, getting Martha's leg set, as it were, and you no know, touch the leg, give it a five points to try to help the bones heal a little bit better and faster. Uh, he's looking a little exhausted. Uh, uh, I say here, uh, let me let me manage up your arm. Huh? Your oh. your arm is broken. That explains it. Callisto just says, both of you sit down. I got it from here, okay? Yes. Castor will sit. All right. Move away. 
Uh, oh, I was talking to you two can go work on him. I'll handle everybody else. I've got two more cure wounds. Okay. Well, I mean, Caster's um, the only one who hasn't. I mean, he, I guess he got healing. He got healing worded. Yeah. yeah is 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 That's anyone gone. else injured? Is Jason okay? Or Jason's what, fine. Wesley, Wesley is at one HP. Oh, okay, I'm going to Wesley. Yeah. Caster's at him. six. Yeah. yeah. Finmore. Wesley's injury looks uh, kind of bad. Uh, and his, he, he's got a stick through his left leg, which needs to be removed. Okay. I will take on that challenge. Um, does Caster see this? Yeah. Um, Callisto. I, I said sit down. I'm. I am sitting. Just please, uh, be careful. You're, removing, you're... removing can be very <laughs> bad. Yes, I'm aware. I've seen such things before. Just give me a shot. Mm -hmm. I got. You. Um, I'm gonna walk over and sit next to him and say, "Okay." This is going to be interesting. I've got it. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend pulling it out yourself. I've dealt with something like this before. You tell. It's no different than an arrow. And he's going to snap off the side of it. And he's going to pull it through. <laughs> and he is going to scream. And then he's going to... Oh, okay. Immediate cure wounds as soon as he has it out. Right. And, and as soon as there like aren't any splinters or anything, just, no. you know, seems clear. And he is going to have already pre-placed a another stick in his mouth because he knew this was coming. And after that, he's going to just take off his shirt and wrap it around his leg, and then he's going to stand up. It's going to hurt. It's not going to be perfect. But Wesley's not the type of person to sit around. You kind of get a, a sense of drive from Wesley. Might be stupid. Callisto. Sorry. Continue. Uh, Callisto just sighs and says, I swear, you... Look, I know you want to get going, but sit down or you won't recover and it'll just be a problem for even longer. Just... Sit, please. Can I at least get back to the car? Yes. Everyone that has broken stuff, please hobble to the cart. Uh, uh, can, can you find me two sticks? I don't have any more metal strips left. Uh, well, I have yeah. one, but you can't make a brace of one. Here, I'll take my flute out and we'll use that as the other one. Uh are you sure i'm i'm sure it it's it's better this it's better to be used than to be just wait sitting in my bag so thank you um castor will i guess take a strip of his sleeve from his right broken arm so he wants he's like ripping it off kind of at the elbow to you know expose his arm so he can get braced better and uh he'll hand it to you all right i will i will wrap it or, or put the flute in the metal brace and start wrapping i will take uh see i got a costume that i never wear and i'll rip it up and use it to bind the the to make the brace all right thanks to your earlier prayers the wind will quickly die down the rain will stop and for the first time in two days, the sun will come out. Uh, may I use my second wind ability uh, by any chance, Corey? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Well, uh, that was exciting. Okay. After everything's calmed down and the adrenaline's worn off, Caster's got like a thousand yard stare going. 
This is the closest he's ever been to actually dying. And let me tell you guys, it was close. It was uh, two HP close. He will. Uh, Finn will also give you another healing word just to help heal a little bit better. Um. Also, if if need be, I my um my left arm is still functional and I can walk around easily enough. So if if you need help pulling the cart or pushing the cart, preferably for me. I can I can do that too. Well, it looks like we still have a bit of light to spend before we reach Fortosum. Callisto, I think everybody saw your trick. You can't happen to turn into something like a draft horse, or well, I think I can make that work. It doesn't last very long, but I can I can try. Let me let me. Let me are look into sure my arsenal of enemies. First. You you didn't look hurt, but are, oh no, are, I'm perfectly fine. All right, well, everyone else, I'll tend to you, and as will Finn, and as will Jason. Um, but everyone else, I, I, I'm going to have to insist that you just take it easy. I've dealt with many sports injuries before not all at the same time mind you but they like Callisto said they don't get better unless you rest them yes you rest is definitely needed y'all y'all fell out of the sky that's not something that happens every day so I, guess um, I, have, a, I have a question for the DM just mm -hmm. regarding these mechanics um since I have dealt with broken bones and um, strained muscles that I guess wouldn't be healed automatically by magic before, would I know the mechanics behind healing these? Like, does it take a full long rest to heal each point of damage, or like, is there some formula? Um, for broken bones, yeah, uh, it can take up to a week, unless you can find a high enough uh, healer. In certain clerical towns that can mend bones. Uh, it's, it's a speciality. Uh, a lot of clerics can do it sometimes for a tiny amount. Uh, but it does it, take some speciality. Follow-up question. Is that a speciality that Caster can learn in the future? Yeah, Is there like special spells that you make for mending bones like as a DM? Like in your world, will there be like a new spell that I can learn that will help me mend bones? Yeah, I'd say I like to learn it. I would like to say that it's not like in this the divine handbook where I just can sort out and pick my spells every day. I'd like to say I'd like to learn that one. I I have a question for Chris. Um, did Zare like like when he opened the bag? Was it like you said it was visible? That he was like opening the bag and looking at the gems. Yeah, see, he, um, for clarity's sake, for, um, uh, uh, sorry, for, ah, loss of words, um, transparency. Uh, he was rifling around in the bag, and when he realized there was something more shiny, he took out the crystals and showed everybody, then showed Jason, told Jason, that he would probably need to take a look at them later and put them back in the bag and pocketed the bag so that everybody could see where they were going. Okay. Fair enough. Then I will I will wait if you relegated it to Jason, the actual person that probably has identify. I will not just look at them with my mundane brain. Castro's interested, but he's also exhausted and... Uh, the last thing he'll do before settling down is go to the front towards the yoke, sir. I think the yoke is what you put the horse on, if I remember correctly. From my equestrian days, it's been a while. Um, and at the tip of one, he'll touch it and he'll cast light. So as the you know the night gets darker and stuff, there will be a light on the front to help lead the way. Okay. Because I don't think horses can see in the dark. FYI, y'all, I can go uh, wild shape for an hour. 
Uh, how far are we from uh, Fort Tosum? Not too far. You guys made a good bit of travel. I'd say five, six miles off the beaten path. Well, that should, we should be. We should be okay then. We uh. We should be able to make that roughly in an hour. Yeah, but we better hurry. In the back of the wagon, if uh, Zare is tending to them as we're moving along, Caster would like, um, he would ask, he would look to him, would you mind helping me set out some of my things quickly? Uh, yes, just as soon as I finish adjusting your pillows, those ribs aren't taking lightly to the bumpy cart. Uh, there, that should do it. Uh, exactly what did you want laid out? And he'll he'll walk him through what he needs laid out for uh, his ritual. And um, as he saw those stones, he would like to also look at them. And so he'll like say, like, I need this there. You know, I need... I need my prayer book here. I need that there. And he'll, he'll go through his list of things that he has and get everything set up. And so, yeah, it's just Zero a ritually cast everything and show him and like this one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He'll that cut one. It down with uh bruised knuckles in, in the place where he designates. And, um, then he'll he'll take out um, the stones for uh, both Jason and Caster and Soot if he's nearby. Uh, though he is, um, to put it in a polite to to mean it politely, he's less concerned with the opinions of those he saw bounce. <laughs> um, and um, he'll he'll ask all three of you, however, despite this. Um, if have you ever seen anything like this? Uh, is there a check I can roll for that one, Corey? Like history or religion or arcana or anything like that? Any of them could get you any information. It's uh, at this point, it's it's whatever you think might give you information. If I if I kind of give that away, it gives way too much away. But each one of those will give you something. Maybe not everything you need. Well, I mean, Kester would would naturally think back to uh, his religious studies, so that's what I'll go with. So, if I may, uh, could I do an Arcana check on them? Sure. And do an Arcana. I will say oh. uh, eighteen of religion, uh, twenty-four in Arcana. Zer himself is just going to innately do a nature check since he sometimes incorporates gemstones into his glass flowers. A nature of 11 for Zer. So let's start with religion. Now, religion would tell you that there was a meeting. Uh, potentially. And unlike in Talalia, here in Incendium, gods can touch the mortal plane a bit, in a weird way. There have been sightings of Chasser, god of the air. It's said that if you see a tornado kind of landing in a forest, that he's meeting Tetra, the goddess of the earth. They seem to be having some sort of... Uh, I don't know what you would call it. Maybe a romance of sorts. Maybe secret meetings, some kind of discussion, something. But they've been seen all over in Cindy. As long as there's trees and you see a tornado, chances are it's them meeting. Now, this is hearsay. Of course, no one's ever actually seen a god. Let's, let's be clear. But that's what they say. Um, with an arcana of 24. This was not natural. Not the way that it showed up. Not the way that it went away. Not the way that it was so devastating. Something here is off. And it's not just pure magic. And with a nature check of 11. Well, shit happens. 
<laughs> can I maybe tell the value of the gems themselves if they weren't magical? Oh yeah, does the detect mm-hmm. magic can mean that the gems are magic or not? They are magical. Yes. Um, okay. I'm I'm currently trying to get you more information. I guess. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Caster will relay to the people sitting around. Um, well, you know. It's said that when Chasser, when you see a tornado happen in a forest like this, it's Chasser meeting, um, it's Chasser meeting Tetra, and some may consider it a romance. Uh, it's stories, you know, but uh, these are definitely magical gems. You don't Oops. say. <laughs> Very much so. I'm trying to I'm trying to glean more about what they maybe Caster's got a little bit of glow in his eyes. The opal one is an illusion of some kind. Something. The blue one is a divination. It comes from divination. And the uh red one is necromancy. So caster illusion Divination. Necromancy. I'm going to like furrow his brow again. Kind of make a face. Maybe we should put that red gem with the knife. I don't want them to touch each other. No, that sounds like a bad idea. Kiss. <laughs> Or the or the best idea ever. No, the worst idea ever. We sure do seem to be coming across a lot of dangerous artifacts. We don't know what's dangerous yet. But necromancy is usually not good. I, arguable. Um, no, I well, the only way you can argue it is some some spells are based in necromancy, used for good, like spare the dying and. I mean, uh, just because a spell belongs to a certain school of magic does not make it inherently evil. I remember one time Matthew ran over our cat and tried to bring it back. That didn't go well. It it shouldn't go well. It's uh, oh yeah, it popped like a balloon. I Gaster looks uncomfortable. Um, it's the thought that counts. If, if you say so. He's trying not to be too rude. <laughs> he He's a good man. Uh, doesn't always get things right. Arguably, rarely gets things right. But I love him. He's such a sweet pea. Zara, out of curiosity, is just going to hold up the sapphire, which he heard was uh, named Div- with divination magic. Yeah. He's going to look through it curiously to see if he sees anything funny. Which one? The sapphire. Uh-huh. What what do you mean by kind of like fun? a monocle? He's gonna try to look through it. Okay, um, like hold it up to a light and look through it. Yeah, I mean you'll see. Smoke. Yeah, just the wispy smoke. Something strange inside. Well, if you say so, but I uh, I I don't see anything particularly uh, enlightening about it. Um. The opal's supposed to be a good luck stone where I come from. It's said to hold all the virtues of the other gemstones and its multicolored facets, but I can't speak for the magical properties of any of them. If any of you, them, if any of you would like to inspect them further or cast any identify spells when we get to town, like you've mentioned, um, I guess I'll hold them in the bag that they came. In. Okay. Um, Corey, I got a question for you. Sure. 
Is there a temple to Demeter in Fortosum that uh, Caster would know of? Yeah, probably. Hog. I am getting a little upset with my phone. For some reason, it is closing apps and not allowing me to use them. That's not very nice. That's very rude. Considering one of them is my bank app. <sighs> what the fuck is going on? Sorry. It's fine. The other day, my mom somehow managed to put her um, uh, phone in factory debug mode. And she's like... Get a virus got in my phone. Fix it. <laughs> I'm like, how did you do this? I didn't do anything. Clearly you did something. <laughs> uh. Uh, by the way, Callisto this entire time is booking it as fast as she possibly can without injuring anyone. <laughs> in, in horse form or person form? In, in horse form. Oh, Lord. I was saying Soot was walking, but if I saw that, I guess Soot would like jog and hop onto the cart. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd imagine you're sitting in the cart. <laughs> I just have a broken wrist and a broken rib, both of which you can walk with, and I don't want to take up any space for the actually fully injured people. When we get to a road which I assume is going to be a little bit more keep to your lane. Um, Zer will walk around to accompany Callisto, assuming she's going to remain in her horse form as long as possible, um, and make it look like the horse isn't driving the wagon by itself. Um, That's probably wise. And, uh, and then try to find a, a stable. I know that's jumping ahead, but that's that's what he'll be doing. Yeah. And if I may, actually, I think Zare, or Zare, gee, I'm not doing that, Soot would sit up front with Zare in that little thing that carriages have, assuming there's one for two. I think there would be. I also think this would be a good place to end it for the night. Hi everybody, you guys know me, I'm Corey, I'm the Dungeon Master for Opportunity Roll. I just want to say thank you for listening. Uh, make sure you follow and subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, or any place that you might be listening on. Uh, if you want to email us, email us at opportunityroll.podcast at gmail.com. We'd like to hear from you, we'd like to communicate. Um, if you want to hop onto our Discord, make sure you check out our Patreon. Um... We've we've got a lot of things going on with the new change of the season and all this new stuff that we've been wanting to do, including but not limited to opening a stream once a month uh, for a side game for all the players to really kind of have fun with. Uh, something we're working on, something not completely sturdy yet. Um, I want to thank Sirenscape for allowing us to use their music in the background to really set the mood. It's It's been fantastic. And I want to thank... Uh, makers of Creature Codex and Tomes of Beast Cobalt Press. Um, you guys you guys do amazing jobs, and these books are fantastic and absolutely love them. If you haven't checked them out, go ahead and do that. Well, um, you guys know the bad news. I broke my leg. Um, but we're going to be transitioning to three-hour-long episodes here soon, and editing will be getting complete because I'll be pretty much sitting around doing mostly nothing. Um, other than that, though, I, I want you guys to know my health is fine. Um, everybody who was in the accident is okay, and um, everything seems to be doing fine. It's just getting back on our feet. <laughs> so if you were worried, thank you. And I will see you guys next episode. And remember, 
keep your opportunities open.